Hello, and welcome back to The Safe Life, Episode 2. That is now the official title, The Safe Life. I'm Will Roos, and I'm so happy to be talking to you over the power of the internet. But uh, also, it's given me the opportunity to speak with six new guests, which will be coming up very shortly. Now, before we get into the questions, the usual questions, I just want to quickly talk about how I'm doing, what I've been doing, and uh, just uh, quick updates in terms of my life, if anyone is interested. So in terms of schedule, I have uh, been definitely peaking. Uh, I have completely surrounded myself with things I've been wanting to do in both April and May. And one of these things is cooking. Uh, now, I've been cooking in general. Uh, something that I've always been doing is, you know, fl flipping on the grill, you know, getting those uh, lots of lots of meat. I've been grilling a lot of meat and uh, just kind of doing that for the last few weeks. Uh, but I also wanted to stray away from that and uh, time to follow recipes. So I made mango mousse very recently uh, after I found a random video in my YouTube recommended. And luckily it turned out great. It was really good. It, the color of the mousse wasn't as orange as I thought it would be, but I think that's probably because they had food dye or something in the videos, probably more or less. I mean, it's, you know, a business. Uh, the disappointment for me, however, is when you make enough for your entire family and then getting replies like, oh, well, I'm on a diet or, oh, I'm not really hungry right now and then proceeds to never eat anything. Uh, of it, which then starts to psych me being like, well, I guess it's more for me, but instead of like, nobody wants to eat my mango mousse. <laughs> uh, so that is one thing has been going on in my life. While roleplay games have gotten very popular with Dungeons and Dragons or Baldur's Gate, I've never gotten into it. So when I was a kid, I would play World of Warcraft a ton, but those tabletop games had really never been my thing. So it just so happens that I've recently picked up Alien the role-playing game, which puts you in the world of Alien as a stranded astronaut. And uh, I have yet to find a co-player. Uh, my God knows my father will not play with me. Uh, <laughs> but hopefully I will have some thoughts on the role-playing experience next episode. Now, I actually wanted to move on into what I've been watching recently, and I'm going to stray away from my usual niche of uh, what I like and just talk about some Netflix stuff that you've probably heard of. Uh, Netflix actually just released their biggest film of all time on the platform, Extraction, and then more quietly, uh, Hollywood, which is coming from Ryan Murphy, who is the creator of Glee, American Horror Story Politician. Kind of not trashy, I don't want to say shows, but uh, more or less, uh, where the focus is not on character and story. So how, how are these? Uh, although I wouldn't recommend either, I will say Extraction is definitely the better of the two. I think it had some great, uh, amazingly directed action sequences. I mean, there's an 11 minute, uh, one shot where it, it's edited to look like one shot and it's just Chris Hemsworth just kind of destroying everything in his way. Uh, and that was great. Uh, but everything else, just from the characters to the store, everything was just kind of middle of the road. And I didn't really, there's not really much there besides some really cool action sequences. I would recommend uh, some similar films like John Wick uh, or The Raid, which I, I think have better, uh, which have just as good action sequences, but with more of the story and character that I, I was looking for. Uh, Hollywood is very similar in terms of there's no character story. Uh, I, it's just so disappointing. Uh, especially because when you're making a show about Hollywood in the 1940s, usually you wouldn't have people who speak like today, you know, but it felt like Hollywood, but if everyone spoke like 2020 millennials, and and that was like, that very much took me out of the whole thing. And uh, besides that, it's just more or less petty drama, uh, a very standard uh, drama show. Uh, that just really has no impact on me whatsoever. So both uh, just not very good uh, and wouldn't recommend those, but I actually wanted to move on now into the questions. So one question I had is talking about uh, college. So where are you going to university and what are you going to study? So if you don't know, I'm actually uh, enrolled to Denison University in Granville, Ohio, 
top choice. I'm so, so excited to be going there. It is, it was, it's literally a dream to be uh, a part of that, uh, part of that class of 2024 now. And what I would like to do is go into psychiatry, but before I do that, I have to go through a pre-medical uh, course, which will last me four years. So that's what I'm aiming for right now. I don't want to start talking about the next 12 years of my life, but right now, uh, what I want to be focusing on is I'm going to be studying pre-medical and then seeing where everything goes from there. And I'm very excited for that. Uh, I've always loved talking to people. I, I you know, obviously, uh, <laughs> I had this podcast, but, uh, I, I think that I, I've always try, I tried not to help, but I, I feel like if I can help in some way, I mean, I, I come from a family of, uh, who, who have, have been social workers in the past. So, uh, it is really cool to be going down that path, hopefully, uh, in my field of interest, which is, uh, criminal and, uh, serial crime, but we will see. Uh, I know for a lot of people, if you've seen the show Mindhunter or whatnot, you know that for people in that profession, it has a devastating mental toll on them, but I think I'd be really good at it how people view mental illness. And I think it's such a unique and new subject that I really want to pursue that, especially as now it's, it's, it's evolving. Another question that I got was if you had to live a very different lifestyle than what you're planning on with your career, what would it be? And that is a question I would probably go towards, uh, film. I would like to do something with film, uh, obviously because I love the art form and I think I'd be, I, I think I'd be really, uh, happy to go down the directorial path. It's just right now, I, I feel like I'm not at a point in my life where I want to pursue that, um, in, in, in a way that would make me happy. And right now I'm just, that's just kind of where I'm at with that, but the definitely directing and writing, uh, has always been a passion of mine. And I, and I continue to do it today. It's just not something that I want to pursue right now. So we'll see what happens with that. Another question I had is, uh, what, uh, if you were the supreme leader of a nation, what would your title be? So, if I was the supreme leader of a nation, uh, I would probably be Lord Rooster, just because my last name is Roos, and Rooster is an animal. Uh, and a rooster, I believe, is very dominant in the animal community. Uh, he, he's very powerful in terms of, you know, waking up the community with his battle cries of you know, cock a doodle do. So I, I think Lord Rooster will be a, a great title for me, especially because now I can just, I can, I can wake up people, you know, at the top of my lungs, uh, in the, in the early morning, you know, dressed up in like this feather costume. So that's always been my dream and hopefully I can pursue that. Okay. And the last question is, this isn't really a question, but I wanted to bring this up because I thought it was interesting. I want to fall asleep to your podcast suggestions. Well, thank you, whoever sent that in, uh, that you want to fall asleep to my voice. But I'm just confused about suggestions. Like, you want me to figure out how to get you to fall asleep. Like, I don't know what you want me to do. Like, you know, but what I, what I have decided on is at the end of the interviews, I will be, if people want to fall asleep or use this podcast as a way to relax and wind down, I will be doing a recitation of a short story by H.P. Lovecraft um, because I feel like that would be one of the best ways for you to unwind where I don't have to go like this, go to sleep. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that at all. Uh, maybe some people do, but I do not want to do that. So we're, <laughs> we're going to uh, just get into the interviews now, and at the end we'll have a story time with Will. Uh, <laughs> so thank you so much, and let's get on with it. And we are live with uh, Mr. Soham Saxena. How are you today? I'm very good. Well, thank you. How are you? I'm very good, all things considered, once again. But uh, <laughs> uh, how? Uh, the, that is the question. How are you? So mentally, are, have you been doing okay? Or like, what's your current mental state right now? Yeah. Um, so like, obviously, this whole situation is less than ideal. So 
not great, but all things considered, I'm very fortunate in that, like, I don't have to worry about food or, like, having a roof over my head. Um, my health is good for now, knock on wood. And, like, so, like, just reminding myself of those things constantly really makes it a lot better. Um, that being said, I don't think anyone can operate at 100% right now, um, considering, like, what's going on. It's just a pretty tough situation for anyone to be in, so... Absolutely. And uh, does that mean you've been keeping busy or like, have you picked up any new hobbies or what have you been doing during, during this? I've been trying to get busy. I have no motivation to do anything anymore, um, which has really been coming across in the work I've been submitting for class, which is problematic. Uh, <laughs> uh, but no, I've been watching a lot of different TV shows. I've been playing a bunch of spike ball with the guys over the house with. Like we have a nice little front lawn, so like that's like my almost like my exercise and my outdoor time, like an hour or so of spike ball a day. Um, so that's fun. That I don't know if that can be considered a hobby, but that's definitely something I've been doing, which I didn't do before. So I do want to actually go a little bit and talk about a little bit of your college experience. Uh, can oh, you tell for, sure. for our audience uh, what college you're uh, at right now and what you're uh, studying? Yeah, for sure. So I'm a freshman here at the University of Southern California, uh, double majoring in economics and political science. And what made you interested in those particular subjects? Um, well, I was always a political junkie um, my whole life. Um, Will will actually remember that I did debate most of high school. He was yes, in my I was going to bring that up. We were years. Um, yeah, Love that was, hear more was so much fun. Doing. Some of the best yeah. uh, experiences I ac actually have had in high school were definitely debate with you, and that was so much fun uh, uh, doing. Lot, and, and yeah, and Absolutely. you you taught me a lot of really uh, great speech and debate skills, which I carried over into Mali United Nations, and it opened up this whole sea of opportunities. So really, thank you for that. Uh, um, I know that college can be uh, a very uh, different experience for a lot of people. So when you when you went to college like when you first started did it meet your expectations or anticipations or were you kind of thrown off in some areas sure so i i don't think anyone fully knows what to expect when going to college um and i tried to go in with a very open mind like i'll see what happens um i had the advantage my brother like that about it um i clicked uh but I was really scared and really nervous, and that continued on for a while. Um, and it was about a month in when things really started to feel right and feel good and settle down. Um, and I have a little anecdote, which is like the moment which it all clicked. And it's really cheesy, and it's really American and really gross. But I'm still <laughs> going to tell it anyway. Please. Uh, so the dorm I lived in, it's uh, right on McCarthy Quad, which here is like the freshman quad for USC. So on game days, football game days, the entirety of it is covered in tailgates. Um, so the day of the first football game, I left my dorm at like 11 a.m. The game was not till 8 p.m. I figured I'd go to the dining hall, grab some food, and then just do some work and then go out and like enjoy myself later in the afternoon. But the entirety of the quad was covered with people. They were like barbecuing, playing games, singing. I was like, oh my God, like this is why I came here. So I turned to my friend and I'm like, dude, this is everything that's right with America. And he laughed at me and walked away, whatever. But like, this is like genuinely everything I wanted when I came to college. It was like communal pride, this communal spirit, um, which when you go to a small high school, you don't necessarily get as much. Um, and that's when I fully bought into like USC as a school and like the whole concept of like the Trojan family and like all that stuff. Mm -hmm. That's what I was like, yeah, right decision. Not looking back. Yeah. Back since then, it's absolutely. I, I think that for just me personally, like when I, I, I knew the instant I saw Denison and in Granville, Ohio, I was like, this is it. You know, just because of the community, I was like, I. Oh, you're going. To, so you're in a crate. Oh, uh, uh, Denison University in Ohio. Denison. Oh, no, so, I'm, yeah, was, my first ch first choice, uh, and I was I got very lucky. Uh, hey, congratulations. Thank you very much. I'm so excited. I can't wait. And uh, yeah, so I know that you're a very uh, 
you're 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 very schedule oriented, I believe. But now that we're in quarantine, <laughs> uh, do you just do like things that like do you just like when you feel like it, or have you like been very regimented about these things? I wanted to be regimented, and I failed in doing that. So it's it's been a bit more like laid back, see what happens, see how things go. Um, it was, so I'm in an organization called Trojan Knights and like I had, I was in my new member semester. So I had a lot of different requirements that I had to complete. Um, and that just finished like last week. So when I had to do those that involved interviewing a bunch of different active members and like taking all these tests and studying for all these tests and doing a bunch of different things. So when that was happening, I was much more scheduled. Um, but now that that's done. I just have so much more free time. I like, I have my classes and I'm like, like once a day I'll schedule like someone who I'll call. Um, otherwise I just kind of walk around the house and see what people are doing. So I, I know that there's a lot of TV shows and, and, and entertainment that's now being pushed out onto, for onto sure. uh, for quarantine. Is there anything that you would recommend for our yes. audience? So I've been watching Ozark. Uh, it's a Netflix show. It's really, really good. I thoroughly enjoyed that show. Um, I just, the ESPN documentary series, The Last Dance, is about the, if you're a basketball fan, a sports fan, that just aired. That's really good. Um, I've been watching Psych with my girlfriend over FaceTime um, about once a week. Psych is a great show. I highly recommend that. Um, so yeah, those are the three I think I would those are, I actually, I just started watching Ozark, and I really love it. It's actually it's interesting how all of these comedic actors, like Jason Bateman and right? John Krasinski, and, like, they're all going to, like, this horror, almost, like, dramatic... Oh, John Krasinski, that reminds me. The Some Good News things on YouTube are always, like, a ray of positivity. Oh, absolutely. Um, I really uh, appreciated the the uh, the 2020 prom that he put on, yeah, which yeah. was kind of fun. It's a nice sentiment, so I, I like... For sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I know uh, for a fact that when you're living with your family in close quarters, it can either bring you together or it can take you very far apart. So who are you living with currently right now? Yeah, so I'm living with my brother um, and nine other guys who are all in the same organization as us, this Trojan Knights organization. Um, we have a house about five minutes off campus. So like some of the guys who lived in this house throughout the year went home. So I'm subleasing one of their rooms. Um, my brother and I talked with our parents and we thought it didn't make sense to go back to England um, because it would just be miserable for all of us. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm not, I mean, there's really nothing to see here, man. I promise. So. <laughs> uh, and like, we have a really good setup here. This is definitely one of the better situations to be quarantined with. Cause like I'm quarantined with like friends and my brother. That's, um, that's great so like and everyone's taking it really seriously and being responsible and just genuinely being good people so it's a really nice vibe to be in it's awesome and i guess yeah. a final kind of question is to ask you like is there a piece of uh, advice or motivation that helps get you up in the morning or maybe for others that you would you know you would give i mean we're just one day one one day closer to this being back to normal um i don't know when that will be hopefully sooner rather than later but i'm not i don't know how that's gonna go but each day is just one day less that we're gonna be in this um and that's that's how you keep going that's how i get up every day well thank you so much uh i appreciate the time you took for this and uh yeah. i and i and i really appreciate it. so thank you very much and we are officially live with one of my good friends denny how are we doing denny hi i'm pretty good how are you i'm very good where are you right now, Denny? Uh, I'm in Sofia, Bulgaria. And how is that? Is the weather nice and everything there? Um, it's very much raining right now. Oh, that's that's unfortunate. But how are you doing, like, just mentally, just like as or, or just like coping with this new quarantine? Weirdly, I'm doing fine. Pretty pretty good. I have a lot of time for self care now. Although I'm still missing a busy schedule, so I'm trying to occupy myself. So now I'm trying to get a routine of going to the gym or cooking at a certain time or just spending time with my family at this point because I like to have everything written out and just have some kind of schedule to follow. 
Have you picked up any, like, new hobbies since then? Or maybe, uh, just, like, having, like, doing new things to keep busy because you just have to fill the time? I don't know about new things, but now I got really obsessed with making new breakfasts. So now every morning I make weird breakfasts, which, by the way, I'm really good at. Um, but that's kind of, I mean, I've always been kind of obsessed with cooking, so now I just have more time to do it. That's awesome. What are some examples of these weird breakfasts that you make? Um, well, okay, I have some really, I don't know, and some are really weird scrambled eggs, because when we have some leftovers in the, in the refrigerator, so I don't want to waste food, so I would try to somehow incorporate them. So the other day we had some pieces of, I don't know what meat, it, it was like sausage pieces that I managed to somehow put in my breakfast. I, I can't really describe it even, but my dad said it was really, really good. I can't even repeat it. I don't know exactly what I did. That's awesome. Well, I you have to definitely, if if everything goes well, you have to make me some when we come back. So sure thing. Yeah. So are you a schedule-oriented person, or do you just kind of do things when you feel like it? And how's that changed since, since everything's kind of gone down? I'm very schedule-oriented. That's why, you know, I like the job of an assistant director, because they have that exact schedule to follow. I love hour-to-hour -hour things to do. It's perfect. But that, and so now I'm kind of making up my own schedule. Whenever I have free time, it feels kind of freeing, but also kind of freaking me out because I don't know exactly what I'm supposed to be doing at that time. And I don't know if I'm productive enough. So I know that we're both now graduated IB film students, and I know you were yes. a wonderful assistant director during our <laughs> productions and uh, our screenplays. And I just, uh, retrospectively, how has the transition from... Uh, physical learning to now like this online learning like what's your opinion on that personally has it been easier for you or harder uh, personally I think it has been easier on me a bit but I don't know if I'm the best person to ask because most of my classes have been um, kind of letting us loose a bit and letting us set the times where we want to do the work and just meeting up just to see how we are and um, but other than that I, I think it was good for me because I was able to just see when I'm really mentally prepared to finish a work and then take two hours and then completely do it in one day and then just be in it. And I'm really proud of some of the work I did, especially for the film portfolio. I think some of the, the written stuff I did was actually some of the best written work I've done for film. And I think that was because I was in the comfort of my own home and had the sense that I really wanted to do this and to get it done. Now for our audience, we are both uh, Ivy Film alumni, we were in the same class, and uh, I was just wondering, what was your like best memory of that class? Just, I, mean, I don't know, I don't want to put you on the spot, but do you have like a specific moment where, or, or, or time where everything was just kind of like at its peak? Yeah, I think at first I was gonna say last year when we were filming the bludgeoning that was before you joined, right? But I thought about it, and actually this year when we were filming. Um, when we were filming Echo, 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 we were filming yes. Echo, um, that first day in the forest when we were all freezing, because in, in, a, in a sense, I remember it as a very weird memory of me being cold and really dying out there, and all of us around just ready to cry of exhaustion, but then there was that moment when Alex's dad brought the pizza, and we were just standing under the tent, just eating pizza with all the equipment surrounding us, no longer caring. I remember and it was so was silent when we were just eating. It was like, yeah. I felt like such a crew back then. I felt like all of us were in the same, the same level of we were all exhausted. We did some work. We were kind of proud of it, but we're, we're just focused on this pizza right now and this little piece of warmth and our little family there. That was, def that was yeah, definitely one of my highlights too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is there anything that you were looking forward to doing? uh before all of this kind of went down that you were like looking forward to doing maybe i was really looking forward to um me and some of the cloister girls from my eight dorm so my best friends that i've lived with for a long time we we were really me and my roommate were planning to invite all of them to a cute all-day picnic in one of the parks around us like in windsor or in london and just take out a bunch of donuts and food and just sit around for a whole day, all of us together in the park, which was 
we were really we were planning it for the whole year. We were really looking forward to that. We were going to celebrate some of the summer birthdays that we wouldn't get to, and we were never we're not going to get to do that now. Yeah, which is kind of sad. That's unfortunate. I'm sorry about that. But I guess living uh, living in uh, quarantine, I, I guess probably you've been able to watch a lot of shows and TV. So is there any like shows or, or, or films that you would recommend to our audience? We've actually had some pretty interesting choices across the board. So, um, I just I'm kind of late, but I just finished the Umbrella Academy. I didn't watch it when it first came out. But then I just finished it, and at first I was watching it, and I thought it was the weirdest thing, but I think during quarantine it was so entertaining. It had my attention the entire time. I felt part of my brain was so disconnected and questioned everything that was going on that I was seeing. But part of me was just really into it. So now I'm really looking forward to a second season. So Umbrella Academy, I'm recommending. Yeah, definitely Good. check that one out. And also, living, I, who are you living with right now? Are uh, Your family, correct? Just my parents, yeah. So has living with your parents brought you more close together or has living with them in close quarters brought you apart? Um, I think we're kind of trying to stay at where we were before because after living four years on my own, I'm not really used to being with them for so long. So then now we're kind of trying to set some boundaries. So sometimes at lunch, they w- I, I choose to just eat myself for a little bit just because I'm, I'm not we don't have that much to talk about anymore. So then I want to keep that relationship, have my own space as an independent person, but also have some space with them. So then at nights we always get together and sometimes make game nights and invite my brothers. And then we keep it at the same level as it was before. So I think, I think we're managing for now. Nobody has died. Oh, well, that's good to hear. Uh, I know, I know for, uh, that you've committed, I believe to a college. Is that correct? Yeah. I just committed to Pace university. Wow, that's amazing. Congrats on that. I'm so happy for you. Mm-hmm. And uh, what are you planning on uh, studying? Or have, do you have any ideas? Uh, I'm majoring in film and screen studies, actually. Oh, wow. And uh, so that's so definitely uh, a shared passion of ours, at least, but definitely something that you really want to pursue, especially uh, your theater and, and acting. That's You're wonderful at that, and uh, you should definitely try to pursue... Uh, something because it, it is really you are really incredible at, at all that stuff so Thank really you. congrats absolutely uh, and I guess finally um, one question I the last question I had is is there any advice or motivation that you like get yourself out of the bed every morning that you tell yourself during this time or maybe for others um I know some people are saying right now that um, people who say, you know, you can get out of quarantine better than you were when you came in it, like use this time to work on yourself because you have the time. And some people are saying that's wrong to do, like do what you want, eat the comfort food, do whatever. But I actually think it's really smart to use this time to just work on yourself. So I'm reading more books or I'm learning something new. And I think it's, you get the chance to sit around and just do whatever you want. And when you come out of it, out of the quarantine, you might have learned something new, and I think that's really useful. So I think that's a, it's a good time to get out of bed and go on an adventure. <laughs> Within your own home, probably, but yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Danny. I really appreciate you taking the time for this, and uh, uh, thank you so much. Thank you. This was really fun social interaction. It was. It definitely was. <laughs> How are you today, Josh? Uh, I am doing okay. How are you doing, Well. I'm doing very good, actually. I've been busy, but uh, I just want to start off with a, you know, talking about how are you. So how are you? Oof, that is the question, isn't it? I am a mix of really good and really bad. It's Let's start with the good. Of emotional. Hmm? Let's start with the good. The good. I am really, really excited for university, and I've been pulling like all nighters and stuff, talking with uh, a lot of my new friends. I've been making. At NYU, and I've been like, it's it's crazy how many like different groups I've already joined. Like I've joined a Dungeons and Dragons group, and we play every weekend. I've joined like a smaller group that just has like a ton of crackhead energy, and they kind of like I really vibe with them. So it's nice to kind of like be in the group I can kind of be myself in. And then today I also joined another group that was one of the friends from the crackhead group created a friendship application, which he sent out to everyone at the school that's joining, and it's a new group chat of everyone that passed the test. 
and they're all insane and really fun. So we spent like all morning just like watching Disney Channel music videos. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's that's pretty fun. And speaking uh, of college, uh, you got into NYU, so congrats on that. It's amazing. Thank you. And Thank uh, you. what are you uh, planning to study, actually? I am studying dramatic writing at NYU, so it's a combination of like screenwriting, TV writing, and theater writing. Um, I don't have too much experience with actual theater writing, but later on into the program, you get to pick which ones you want to specialize in. I'm going to choose screenwriting and TV writing. Well, it's actually interesting because we kind of, I think it would be safe to say that we both come from the same kind of a film stem, I suppose. Uh, I, I would say you are my film stem. Oh. Because film. if... I, I like to think that if you didn't give me shit for liking Jack and Jill back in seventh grade, yeah, that's, I would yeah. never become a film major. I would never become a film major. Oh, well, thank you very much. I, I'm, yeah, we both uh, just grown up over the years, just, you know, having this passion, this shared passion. It's been amazing to just see uh, that evolve into our own work, which you are so yeah. amazing. I just watched... Uh, oh, I, you. Check out his YouTube channel. I'll plug it in the description. It's absolutely incredible. So, uh, Thank it, you. yeah, it really is. But I guess moving into like the bad. So yeah. tell me, like, what's well, going I, on with that? I, I'd say before we go into the bad, I'd say likewise. I mean, it's been really awesome getting to see some of your IB films this year because, like, I've always known you're like the most creative person I know. I don't even like you're so out there, and it just fascinates me. Thank you. And I just love hearing, like, whatever stories and, like, movies you come up with and getting to watch some of your IB films has been fantastic. I mean, like, even all the way back to, like, the, the Bunny movie. Oh, I right. I still remember. Yeah. Like, yeah, that was David Lynch. a trip. That was a trip. I did that definitely David Wait, Lynchian, yes. Uh, but thank you very much. Uh, and now for the bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so my sleep schedule is, woof. I mean, like, it's like going to bed at 5 a.m., waking up at 3. And I've been on break this week, um, just stuck in the apartment, which isn't fun. Um, but I'm on break this week, and I start school tomorrow or Monday for whenever this airs. Um, and I had to, like, stay up all day because I had to wake up at 4 a.m. to play D&D. &D, and I've been, I'm like, if I took a nap after that, I would screw over my sleeping schedule. I wouldn't fall asleep, and then I'd be all screwed up for this entire week. So I've been having to force myself to just drag through the day, which hasn't been fun. Uh, and then on a probably more major note, um, I got into a nice Corona relationship with a very nice lady. Um, I say lady, but she's, she's a girl. She's 18. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she's actually 72 years old. I think we bonded over our mutual um, love for Mahjong. Oh, exactly. Uh, no, she's, she's quite nice. And we I actually asked her on a Minecraft date. I met her on Tinder and asked her on a Minecraft date. Mm -hmm. And we hit it off. And we very quickly started dating. But when the quarantine got worse, before we could even get to meet each other, Thailand, or where I live, uh, was put under lockdown. So we didn't get to meet. And that became really stressful for our relationship. And right now we've been on like a one week break where we're just like trying to just do like the friends thing because unless like the quarantine drops, then it's like just too painful to continue just trying to foster a relationship with no prospect of actually seeing each other. Because even though she lives 20 minutes away, it's like a long-distance relationship. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But, you know, some yeah. things that you can't help but make work is family, right? And I know that uh, you're living with your family right now. Is that correct? I'd say I'm cohabitating with them. Okay. I rarely see them. I, I don't eat with them much. It's like uh, <laughs> our schedules are completely off. Like they'll knock on my door like once a day and be like, hi, Josh. I'll be like, hi. And that will be the extent of our interactions. So when they turn on the light, you're like a vampire. Like, turn it off, turn it off. Ugh. Oh my gosh. What's something funny is the, the other day, it was like two in the morning. And I was watching Ozarks. And I was like, hmm, I wonder if you have any popcorn. I kind of want to eat some popcorn and watch movies. And I walk over and walk into the kitchen and my dad's sitting on the couch at like, 2.30 in the morning is on door. And I'm like, <laughs> I, I, I immediately stop and like, hi, Dad, what are you doing up? It's like 2 a.m. And he's like, oh, I couldn't. And I'm like, ah, fuck, up. I'll drop the reason. I'm like, yeah, me, I was just watching Ozark. I'm here for popcorn. He just gave me such a judgmental stare. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, that's my family as well. Like when I'm going upstairs and, and I and I just see a parent on the way down, I'm just like, I am just, I grab my phone. I promise I wasn't doing anything dumb. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I, and speaking of shows and TV, is there anything that you've been watching over quarantine that you would recommend to our audience? Ozarks. Ozark is so good. It's honestly the some of the best TV I've seen here. It's mm-hmm. so well written and acted and directed. Like um, Jason Bateman yes. directs a lot. Of I think he won an Emmy for one of them. I think he uh, did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the characters are just so interesting and so well crafted and it's one of those shows that like each season it gets more and more interesting and you kind of just get like really hooked on it um so i'd say ozark some quality quality television yeah actually i just started it actually with my friend we're doing a netflix yeah. party on we're on the fourth episode and we're, we're i'm really digging it um so i yeah. i really love it and it's also interesting to see like these comedy actors become like mm-hmm. directors in like dramatic arts because now we see jason bateman uh, you know, Jordan Peele, like these very like comedic figures now and turning to like dramatic and horror. So it's really interesting yeah. to see like this new shift. Like Krasinski. Yeah. I, oh, John Krasinski and A Quiet Place. Exactly. So it's a yeah. big jump. So, something, something funny about Ozark was I was reading a thing and have you watched Arrested Development? Do you know about I've I've seen I've seen a few episodes. My parents watch it a lot. So he played a character in that called Michael Bluth and he was essentially the straight man to a bunch of insane family members. And I was watching a thing, and it was like, he's essentially playing the same character, but instead of, like, insane funny people, he's playing with, like, insane killers and murderers. And where he's still, like, the same... Jason Bateman just plays Jason Bateman as, like, an everyman. And I think he does it really well. But I just think it's just a stellar show. But I couldn't help but, like, see, like, the comparisons. It's, like, a sequel to Arrested Development, where after that show, he just became a money launderer. <laughs> exactly. So it's kind of a good parallel. Uh, is there anything that you've been lo- that you were looking forward to doing uh, before the quarantine went down? Like, are, was there anything like you wanted to get done before the college year starts that you just can't do, or maybe you are looking forward to after this quarantine finishes? Yeah. So for me, my okay, my plans are kind of like fast and loose. I was in the midst of making plans with my good friend Spencer, and we we're gonna like travel Europe and we're going to come visit you in England. We're yeah, gonna start in England. I remember and those days. We're going to, yep, that was, and then that was the first thing that went out the window and Corona started becoming a big thing. Um, but one thing that I've kind of been like, now I miss like beforehand, I was like, uh, prom, I don't know. I didn't really care too much. Or like after grad and senior trips. Cause I'm not too like into the social scene. Um, but like now that well. Once I met Ella, I was like, oh, we were joking about how we'd go to her prom, and then my prom was a week later, and we'd hit up two proms or something like that. And it was stuff like that. It's like, now I'm like, crap, I kind of wanted to go to prom and enjoy my senior prom and go to after grad and stuff like that. Um, but that's not going to happen anymore. Yeah, you know what was interesting I mean, is that uh, when, when I, when everything, you know, the Corona situation over here kind of was very, it was slowly but surely escalating. It wasn't one to 100 really quickly. So it actually gave me time to reflect on like what I took for granted. And actually, instead of like regretting, I actually took advantage of like what I took for granted, like hanging out with friends and talking to them about things I wanted to talk to them about. Uh, so during those last one or two weeks I did, I, 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 there was some, I don't know, closure that came from just actually realizing. So for me personally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can, I get that. I get that. In Thailand, it was, it was a bit weird because like they went everything, the government was like, Oh, everything's fine. Everything's fine. And then we went home for the weekend and then we never went back to school. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. That sucks. They were like, my King, the Corona has taken over. And he's like, just don't tell the kids we're closing the school. Execute order, close the schools. Exactly. And they were, yeah. But it's like, for the first few weeks, I have a neighbor in my apartment building who goes to my school. And we were like meeting for lunch every day. But then my neighbor, like the guy that lives across the hall, he tested negative for Corona, or positive for Corona. Oh, shit. And like, that was when it was like half lockdown, but I couldn't leave my apartment building because I had borrowed his basketball two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if. I'm going to contract Corona because I filled some layups with his basketball, but... Oh, God. Well, that's all I, we can hope for. Yeah. Well, it was, for, it was more than 14 days. It was like two or three weeks ago. 
So I'm in the I'm in the green now. Good, good. And is there anything? Uh, here, my dog is barking. I'm just gonna. So I had one more question, but now I'm just gonna go check on my dog. What's going on with Windsor? Give him a treat or something. Don't let him out of sight again. That was an accident. What happened with the puppy? Oh, he just, he just, somebody knocked on the door and he goes crazy. So, uh, right, uh, back, to, I can just cut it. I can, I can edit it, you know how it is. Um, so, uh, okay. And my final question to you, Josh, is do you have any advice or words of motivation just for yourself or others to like maybe help get through this time? Hmm. Um... I would say just try and establish a regimen or some sort of schedule. I mean, for me, it's been weird because most of the people I've been talking with are in the U.S., so I've, to, I've been adapting to their time zone almost. But just in general, like, speak with friends. I try and call people as much as possible, even if I'm like, we're not doing anything, just like watch Netflix in a Netflix party or just be with someone else's presence. Um, that's the first thing. Just like make sure you're connected with people. Make sure you establish a schedule so that you still have some like structure to your life. And you're not just like, being a vegetable on the couch um, and pick up any new talents. Like I've been playing a lot more guitar lately, um, which is something I rarely ever did um, and reading a lot more, which has been nice. So it's like to pick up old hobbies. I'd say that's definitely a good thing because at least makes you feel like you have things going on in your life and allows you to stay busy. Uh, Cause if you don't have things going on and you're just sitting by yourself watching Netflix on the couch, a you're going to run out of shows to watch very quickly because Corona ain't going anywhere. Right. The second of all, you're gonna go. You're gonna probably drive yourself insane. Right. Exactly. You know, sometimes you know too much of a good thing can really have vitro sometimes. So, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Josh. I really appreciate you taking yeah. the time. Yeah. All right, and we are live with Declan Watkins, uh, an awesome Tassis friend I've known for a long time. How are you doing, Declan? Doing fantastic, man. How about you, buddy? I'm doing great. Uh, so, so how have you just been like living in quarantine compared to just normal life? Like, is it has it changed for you a bit, or how's it been? Oh, definitely, yeah. So, I'm I'm I see myself as a social, a introverted extrovert. Like, I like going out, but I still need some time to recover. And over the past few weeks, staying indoors in my home, like it's it's been okay. I've been like able to do some self improving stuff. But I miss my homies. I miss my friends. Yeah. I miss going out. I do. I, I mean, I'm obviously, I mean, I remember when we would, you know, have fun in stains or whatnot. And it would, it would, now that's kind of gone now and I feel bad. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely, uh, but, but I guess then you, you keep busy, right? So have you been keeping busy? Like, or picked up any hobbies, new hobbies, or has it been like very just more of the same? Oh, definitely. I've, I've picked up the bass guitar over the past, I, got a bass guitar around like right before before the quarantine before tom hanks got it i got a bass guitar and it was been sitting in my room and like last week i was like you know what? i'm gonna try something new and i just started playing with it and i'm becoming a little bit decent at it and i'm really impressed and that's what i've been doing for the past couple weeks so, so so are you like a schedule oriented person or do you just like do things like when you feel like it so <laughs> uh I wish I could be a scheduled oriented person. I do try to keep a schedule, but it, I guess that gets lost track. And then boom, I'm suddenly trying to watch some documentary. And then now I'm in a YouTube plunge of <laughs> like how to, how to, how to have a big cat, for example, because I watch Tiger King. Once. So are there any like shows or, or, or movies that you would recommend to our audience that you, that you've picked up? Oh my God. Tiger King. Oh my goodness. What, oh, Carol what a Baskin. crazy show! I, I like. I always get get a good in depth detail like how the show is like a picture of a like. I'm so happy it was released during quarantine because if it wasn't during released during quarantine, I think it would have just got slept on. But right. people started watching it. It's like whoa! It's such a crazy story, Joe Exotic. I mean, what a what a character, you know? Oh my God, he is such a character. Like. I, every episode I watch, like beginning, is like, oh, he runs, ta he runs a zoo. Next, oh, he's in a polygamy, gay marriage. Yeah, I know. Thing. And then it's absolutely. He runs insane. for president, and then it's like, what? It's just so 
crazy. It's absolutely and then, like, crazy. He gets arrested. Oh my gaze. Yeah. Like my jaw was dropping whenever that every new episode. It was like it gets even more crazier. Yeah. So I, so I guess moving on to like you anything you were looking forward to doing. So is there anything that you were looking forward to doing towards the end of the year? I know I know a lot of prom and school stuff, but is there any, personally is there anything that you were looking forward to that you just can't do now or maybe are looking forward to after quarantine finishes? Well, I was I'm very privileged that my lacrosse season for Tassis was in winter, but now, with the weather and stuff, I really miss going to tournaments and playing with my teammates. And with this quarantine stuff, even though we are kind of staying six feet apart when we play and such, it's still it's still not the same going outside. I really miss just, you know, being with other people. Even if I'm not talking with them, I just lounge around, be like a little Labrador, just go, yeah. Just being, just being with other people. That's what I really miss. Yeah, I, and I know. And do you think you're going to pick up lacrosse when you uh, go off to uh, college? Oh, I've gotten some D3... Uh, like, I got scouted by some D3 NCAA coaches. Oh, wow. This last couple of weeks, yeah. That's amazing. And it's... it's like, I like to tell them, like, yeah, I'm playing lacrosse, but I'm not really right now because of the quarantine. And most of them don't understand that all college sports got canceled this this season as well so now we're on this weird awkward phase of like okay uh we know you can play but we can't tell we we have no way to prove that you're required at this level which kind of sucks that's why i like kind of miss not going to tournaments but and you've committed (laughs) to a college i believe correct sorry what you've committed to a college i believe correct no i've not oh, okay it's, so you're still deciding i'm right still now. deciding yeah but i you know definitely for sure that lacrosse is something you're gonna pick up definitely so okay. great i so my college search i've i've narrowed it down to three and okay. i'm i'm still a little anxious because like people are saying yes i love this college i'm going to this college blah 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 yeah committing yeah, into yeah. it but Absolutely. i don't have that sense of this is it mm-hmm. moment thing and that's and I want to emphasize that to a lot of other students because to, to other students because I researched my colleges very well, and no matter which college I go, I'll love it. Yeah, I mean, and, don't feel like there's a rush. I mean, when I was, I mean, I we looked at I don't know how many colleges over last summer, and I was like dying by the end of it. But one thing that I got out of it, and I think this is just such an awesome feeling, is that you know what spoke to you, even though it's such a long process, you know. Exactly, exactly. You find things that you don't like, and then you slowly ramp it up to saying, oh, I like that part of the ASP community, or I like that part of the, the campus. Mm-hmm. And the colleges I found that spoke to everything is, I've narrowed it down to three, Hofstra mm-hmm. in New York, uh, USD in California, in San Diego, and Goucher in Maryland. Okay. Well, and I was just I know that the there's three. a, I definitely, uh, I know a lot of TASS's kids who have gone to uh, a, one, a few of those. And, I mean, those are, I mean, you're, you're, I know wherever you go, you're going to do great. So don't worry about it, man. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, so I know that bringing people together is something that's obviously very important during quarantine. Who are you living with right now, actually? Your family, correct? Yeah, I'm currently with my, my family, my sister and my parents right now. So, big question. Has living with your family brought you closer together or farther <laughs> apart? I think we're in a weird state of limbo because like we both of my parents work so when we all coming in together like it's great to have the personal time like right before this interview i just finished the episode of the mandalorian oh, with yeah. my parents that's another also great show to watch it is it, i, I finished it it's, it's wonderful and we just finished the show and even though we both we all love the show we are still like knowing each other like can you be like we're all in the same couch like cuddled up like no i i don't want i need i need a little more space please yeah absolutely and i guess just a final question to wrap everything up um what is something like a piece of advice that like gets you out of bed every morning or maybe that our audience would appreciate just to get through this quarantine uh, well for me the well i'm i'm not i'm not a scheduled person but the first thing i always do is i get up bed i get a breakfast and then i go for a run 
that that's where I've always been consistent for the past like five weeks or so, going out and, and running. I used to hate running. Well, I, I do hate running, but I'm decent at it where I've gotten many opportunities. So it's just constantly get up, run, and then I do my work because I get a sense of a little clarity, a little more focus after that run and get some food in me as well. That's awesome. Well, I, thank you so much, Declan. I really appreciate you taking the time uh, for an interview, and uh, I hope you're doing well. So thank you so much. Thank you, Will, for this amazing opportunity. All right? All right. Okay. And we are live with one of my very good friends, Anka Patel. Uh, how are you today? Yeah, I'm doing good. Good. Uh, so uh, I actually wanted to talk about how you are. So how how are you now in quarantine? Has it has it been a little bit different for you, or are you kind of just chilling? I'll be honest. At the start, it was a bit difficult to like first adjust, but um, once I got used to it, I found it pretty relaxing and enjoyable. I'm not gonna lie, like. There isn't really anything too stressful, and I've been able to kind of do my work at whatever time I went to, take breaks when I went to. So it's not been entirely too stressful for you. You're just kind uh, of doing things for yourself. How have you been keeping busy? So I've been engaging in a lot of like creative projects. So I do a lot of drawing. I do a lot of writing. Obviously, I still do some schoolwork and stuff. But overall, I've mainly done like just projects to keep myself interested. And have you picked up any like hobbies, or is it has it, or like anything during quarantine that maybe you wanted to do, or not much? I guess it's more like I'm kind of giving myself the time to do the hobbies that I originally didn't really have as much time to do when school was like more in session. So obviously, like you know, I'd be writing an essay if I wouldn't have time to draw or something like that. And uh, and I know that you're you're very you're a hard worker. I know that. And, but are you a schedule oriented person, or do you just are are you now just doing things because like when you feel like it? So I like try to be a more schedule oriented person, but I am naturally more like free form, I guess. But giving myself a schedule does give me like I guess um, some kind of structure throughout the day. Yeah, and and, and I guess is there anything? you were looking forward to doing that you just can't do anymore? Um, yeah, honestly, just, like, with the second semester, senior year, there isn't, like, as much hardcore school work going on, so I was hoping, like, I could go to, like, sort of park with my friends or, like, just kind of go out with them a bit more often, but, you know, with quarantine and the lockdown, you yeah, can't really That probably that. would have involved probably, all, you know, me and, and some other people, too, so that just makes it especially sad. Uh, but that's okay. Yeah. Uh, so I know that during quarantine, uh, there's a lot of, uh, shows and TV that probably people want to catch up on. Are there any shows or TV that you would recommend to our audience? Hmm, I guess something more long-running, because, you know, more episodes means more time to go on that content. But I guess, like, I've been catching up on The Office, because it's just, <laughs> it's just one of my favorite. Um, it was great. And then... What else? Like, I've been watching a, a few more, like, movies that I probably wouldn't have, I wouldn't have had um, time to watch during, like, the school week and stuff. So, I guess I'd recommend, like, um, I've mainly been watching anime movies, so... I mean, I mean, a lot of people have given, like, more normie answers, so if you want to give something really, truly out there, like, uh, please do. I mean, yeah, so I watched this movie called, um, In This Corner of the World. It's kind of like, um... A uh, period piece about like World War Two, Japan, like you know, kind of around the timing of like the bombings there. So I think like that's a pretty interesting, if um, somewhat bittersweet story that people would enjoy, and a bit different than like I guess the usual stuff. Uh, how have you found the 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 schoolwork in terms of online learning? How has that transition been for you? Okay, so at the start, like I honestly found it kind of hard because, like. There wasn't really any structure for me, so like I had a bit of a rough time getting all of my work in. But once I kind of gave myself a schedule to get like you know certain pieces of work done, it kind of started fitting in nicely, and I kind of adjusted to all the schoolwork. So it became like not that stressful, pretty chill. And I know that uh, you know family time now you can either bring together or move apart. So I know that you're living with your family right now, right? And uh, so how has that been, just like in close quarters with your family? Has that been good for you or...? <laughs> yeah, honestly, it's been pretty good. Like, um, my mom and I, we do, like, exercise together in the morning. So we, like, kind of 
you know, do runs and stuff in the garden. And then, like, with my brother, we've had more time to, like, do stuff together. So we've been playing um, more video games together, which is nice. That's awesome. And I know uh, you've officially committed to Georgia Tech, so congrats, Oscar. Yep. It's very oh, exciting. Oh, yeah, check it. Oh, ex- I'm so, yeah, I'm so happy for you. And uh, I just wanted to know, is there anything that maybe you are you want to, that you've been doing at TASIS that maybe you want to continue doing? So, like, maybe, like, a major that you maybe thought about or anything like that? Yeah, so for major, I'll probably do, like, computer engineering at um, Georgia Tech. So I'm kind of interested in just kind of continuing to work with, like, um, Arduinos, which are like small, like computer brain things for like kind of just making different projects. Can you talk a little bit about the computer sciences and, and how that kind of works? A little like, basic, uh, a little basic thing of knowledge. Yeah, sure. So like, um, I'm kind of going more into the hardware side of computing. So I'll be kind of working more with like kind of, um, I guess like kind of more of the down to the earth type um stuff so with like the hardware component so if you've seen projects where they like automate like light switches and stuff or like maybe they automate like watering in like greenhouses i i kind of want to work with like those type of things kind of like robotics and then kind of for specifically in the future i'm kind of interested in working with like computer architecture which is kind of like the total organization of like a computer at the hardware level so i'm interested in like microchips and like um, those types of things, like GPUs and CPUs. But, That's awesome. Yeah. And I know you do a lot of writing as well, a lot of creative yeah. writing. Has has your ideas now, uh, like, I do, are you, you have a lot more time to think about all these, like, ideas in your head and trying to get out of them on paper, or is it, has it been a little bit of more or less the same? So for me, like, I always focus on, like, only one idea for, like, large stretches of time, so... This just gave me a lot more time to focus on that one idea instead of like, yeah, instead of constantly getting distracted by like schoolwork or whatever. Is there one thing that you miss about like one thing that just like if you could get it back, you would like just like one thing from the, this year? Or maybe like, in life. If we didn't have quarantine or like. Just, yeah, if we didn't have I quarantine, want... like if it was okay, like one uh, thing. I guess just kind of like advisory times because i didn't realize how much i liked them until i was like in my quarantine like lockdown thing but advisory is pretty chill you just kind of like banter with everybody there and like just joke around and honestly it's kind of nice because like those people they're like i normally wouldn't really interact with them because not everybody there is kind of like my close friend or like you know main friend so uh, it's nice interacting with people that's like outside of your comfort zone or like normal friend group good and I guess as, as a final question, just kind of wrap everything up. Is there a, a piece of advice or motivation that gets you through each day or maybe that others would appreciate? Um, I guess just kind of enjoy yourself. Like, honestly, like, I guess, like, especially with the college admissions process, I got super stressed about stressed out about trying uh, to get into I know. I was, I was there for a lot of times emotional support. <laughs> yeah, you so. <laughs> But, like, kind of at the end of it, I realized, like, you know, things work out, so just try and enjoy yourself, like, just kind of chill out a bit and just take it easy. Yeah. Well, I appreciate uh, you taking the time for this interview, Anker, so thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. And we are live with Mr. Colton Dudley, uh, one of my good friends who I've known for a very long time. How are we doing today, Colton? Uh, yeah, not too bad. Not too bad yourself. Oh, I'm doing great. I actually just wanted to start by uh, asking how are you mentally and uh, uh, how have you been uh, doing during these uh, quarantine hours? Uh, right now, I'm uh, doing pretty well mentally. I've, uh, yeah, I, ca- I can't say the uh, same for the whole quarantine. I went through a, f- a few rough days here and there, but I think I've got a pretty good system to stay happy, which is listening to happy music, and uh, that's been keeping me on the mentally sane path, so... And how have you been keeping busy? Well, uh, school now it's uh, school's given me a lot of work, but before I'd do a lot of exercise. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm a uh, competitive gymnast, and obviously I can't go to the gym anymore, but we still train about an hour to an hour and a half every night over a Skype call, and then on top of that, I do some more work and uh, go for a run every day, 
Have you been uh, just doing like like building yourself up running? So trying to like do better better time each time, or is it just kind of like a fun sort of run? Um, yeah, that's actually an interesting one because before the quarantine started, I absolutely despised running, but then um, we got our conditioning set, and on it was a three to five k run every day, and I was kind of thinking, oh god, this is gonna be horrific. And then I started running 3K every day. At the start, I wasn't a big fan. But after about a week and a half of running 3K every day, I was addicted. And so, yeah, now I just try and uh, run the 3K as fast as I can and uh, try and do 5K Fridays. But that failed That failed today. So oh, okay. It was, well, it was maybe tomorrow. Today. <laughs> <laughs> have you picked up any hobbies, like new hobbies around this quarantine time? Or have, has it just been just normal for you, just... Um, I guess the one new thing that I've started to do is, uh, play guitar. I picked up an acoustic guitar from the school before, uh, before we went to online learning. And so I've been making the most of that. Um, i would already been playing quite a bit of music before. Yeah. So that's just like adding another instrument on. It's actually kind of crazy how many people I've interviewed who said they started picking up guitar because like, it's actually kind of just this like new kind of thing that I'm sure that everyone has been like, like there's this silence, silent interest and now everyone's just kind of finally pulling the trigger on it. So I can't wait for Tassus's 2020 like guitar uh, riffing, just every a chorus of guitars that I'm waiting for. So it's going to be exciting. Uh, <laughs> Uh, another thing, uh, I know that you are a very, uh, you have a, you are a very scheduled or oriented person. Would, would I say so in that? Or do you just do things when you feel like doing them? Um, well, before the quarantine, I had a very tight schedule, but that was kind of thrust upon me. I didn't give myself that tight schedule. Um, so now I think I'm enjoying not having the schedule and just doing things when I want, like, I go into a day knowing what I want to do. So say I want to um, ha do my workout, my schoolwork, bake a pie, those three things. Um, I don't really say, like, plan out when I'm going to do them in the day, but I try and just get them all done by the end of the day, or maybe even for a whole week. Like, um, say I want to learn a new song or something, then I'll say this week I'll learn the song, and then just make sure it's done by the end of the week, but whenever I feel like it. That's awesome, and I I know that you bake. You make ex. You made an excellent pie. I remember the week before, we all left. But uh, oh, thank you. Is is there? Do you do you like baking? Is that like a passion of yours that you've always kind of had, liked to do? I think more so. I like eating. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And when you bake, you can make it exactly how you want it how you want it to uh, be served. So. Um, that's awesome. But no, b baking's fun too. Yeah, I enjoy the process. So is there, I actually want to talk about um, your gymnastics. I know that's a huge part of your life. Uh, how has uh, gymnastics uh, kind of just been a part of your life these last few years? And how, is, how has it helped? Has it helped you in a way, maybe like through this quarantine? Like, has is it like a sense of relief when you do this excerpt, like this, you know, gym, gymnastics? Um, yeah, well, being part of the team is something that's always, like, all the guys are always there for me, and it's really great having that in quarantine. Like, I know every day at 5, we're going to be online on the Skype call, and that just gives me something to look forward to if I'm not, if I, like, wake up and I'm feeling down or something, I can look forward to training. And that's kind of the same as what it was um, before the quarantine. Like, if I was having a rough day at school, I know I can go to gym and let my stress out there. And I know that um, it's really important to be part of like a community. So I guess that's definitely something that's probably helped you. Is there anything that you were looking forward to doing? Uh, just not not in school in general, but just like things that you wanted to do maybe in London or for yourself before this all kind of went down. Or maybe looking forward to doing after maybe all of this settles. Well, I think the biggest things were my competitions. So I would have had English championships, British championships... Um, in the last two weeks, and obviously those got cancelled, and hopefully they're going to get rescheduled so we can do them once the uh, lockdown lifts, or maybe in the fall or something like that. Um, but other than that, just like personal things, um, yeah, there was I had a, a little list going uh, that mainly included theme parks 
Um, I'm a pretty big roller coaster enthusiast. Oh, I know you are. I mean, I I, yeah. I, I remember when we went to Thor Park one of the, one a few times. I remember you were just like, we got to go on the, this backwards and forwards, and yeah, it was yeah that was those were good those were the days. Uh, uh, is there any movies or TV that you've been watching that you would recommend to our audience? Um, I'm not really one for movies or TV shows, but I did watch the Lord of the Rings trilogy, and oh, I really yeah. enjoyed that. I, I thought it was fantastic. I I tried to watch it previously and thought it was like a bit slow and long. Yeah. But I guess now that every everything's a bit more slow paced in quarantine, mm -hmm. um, it it was a good vibe. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I actually I I watched the first um I watched the Fellowship of the Ring last night, uh, the extended edition. I started at around nine. It ended around one o'clock. It was like four hours. It was insane. I was just mm -hmm. like, ah, uh, this is. I don't know why I powered through, but I did. Uh, how I know that living you're living with your family right now, so you're you're in very close quarters. Has that brought you more together or torn you farther apart? Um, it's probably brought brought us more together. Like, uh, we we are all pretty busy people. So before the quarantine, I mean, we we had family time, but we didn't really spend that much time together. And still, uh, like. Uh, I can escape the house and go for a walk if I ever get like annoyed at my brother or something like that. So, <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, I actually wanted to talk about uh, college for a second. Uh, I believe you've I believe you've committed to a college. Is that am I correct in saying that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, well, I made my firm choice imperial. It uh, I met all the conditions, but um, well, there's a yeah. So, hopefully, I'll be going to imperial. Okay. And what would you mostly, like, what would you want to study? Because I also wanted to segue into, like, your passion for, or, or interest. Well, I'm going to be studying physics, just pure physics. And part of the reason I did that is because I don't, I'm not really sure what I want to do. So physics is kind of like a broad subject. A gateway, kind of. Let me go in different directions. Like, I could go math, engineering, um, like, like, lab work, physics. Type. Yeah. Stuff, so. Physics are super interesting because, you know, there's a ton of stuff that resolves around, like, engineering and uh, and the like. So it's it's really a cool kind of course, and I feel like if I, I did understand it more, I would I would definitely be looking at that. But because I am still in only, I can barely get through AP Bio, I'm just going to lay it, lay it like that. So uh, I guess <laughs> one more thing is... Uh, I, I know that, that we have been, we've been doing online classes right now, and how has that been working out for you? Do you like like the online learning, or how is that? Um, I think it's pretty good because everyone just gets straight to the point. There's a lot less time wasted, mm -hmm. and I know that perhaps if we had this earlier on in the year when we were still learning material, it might have been a bit rough, but now that we're getting towards the end, it's more revision. So I, I don't think it's too bad, except for in jazz band, which uh, is not working at all. Um, we've tried to all play at the same time, and it was atrocious. Oh god, I can only imagine like the slight, like the slightest lag in somebody's mm -hmm. computer could just destroy it all. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and my final question to you, just to kind of wrap things up, is: Is there any advice or motivation that you give yourself every morning, or that that helps you, or maybe for our audience that you would like to share? I think it's just uh, knowing that this is all going to be done, and I'm gonna get to go back to my uh, regular gymnastics so i need to keep training uh so i don't lose fitness and that's the main one that's great well thank you so much colton i really appreciate you taking the time to do this and uh uh we're gonna get through this i know especially because we live so close so you're coming over for a barbecue as soon as this is over okay of course yeah okay thanks yeah thanks for having me yeah thank you the color out of space by hp lovecraft West of Arkham the hills rise wild, and there are valleys with deep woods that no axe has ever cut. There are dark, narrow glens where the trees slope fantastically, and where thin brooklets trickle without ever having caught the glint of sunlight. On the gentler slopes there are farms, ancient and rocky, with squat, moss-coated cottages brooding eternally over New England secrets in the lee of great ledges. But these are all vacant now, the wide chimneys crumbling and the shingled sides bulging perilously beneath low, gambrel roofs. The old folk had gone away, and foreigners do not like to live there.
French Canadians have tried it, Italians have tried it, and the Poles have come and departed. It is not because of anything that can be seen, or heard, or handled, but because of something that is imagined. This place is not good for the imagination, and does not bring restful dreams at night. It must be this which keeps the foreigners away, for old Ami Pierce had never told them of anything he recalls from the strange days. Ami, whose head had been a little queer for years, is the only one who still remains, or whoever talks of the strange days, and he dares to do this because his house is so near the open fields and the traveled roads around Arkham. There was once a road over the hills and through the valleys that ran straight where the blasted heath is now, but people ceased to use it, and a new road was laid during far along the south. Traces of the old one can be still found amidst the weeds of a returning wilderness, and some of them were doubtless linger, even when half the hollows are flooded for the new reservoir. Then the dark woods will be cut down, and the blasted heath will slumber far below blue waters whose surface will mirror the sky and ripple in the sun, and the secrets of the strange days will be one with the deep secrets, one with the hidden lore of old ocean and all the mystery of primal earth. When I went to the hills and vales to survey for the new reservoir, they told me the place was evil. They told me this in Arkham, and because it is a very old town full of witch legends, I thought the evil must be something which grandams had whispered to children throughout centuries. The name Blasted Heath seemed very odd and theatrical, and I wondered how it had come into the folklore of a Puritan people. Then I saw that dark westward triangle of glens and slopes for myself, and ceased to wonder at anything besides its own elder mystery. It was morning when I saw it, but shadow lurked always there. The trees grew too thickly, and their trunks were too big for any healthy New England wood. There was too much silence in the dim valleys beneath them, and the floor was too soft when the dank moss and maddenings of infinite years of decay. In the open spaces, mostly along the line of all the old road, there were little hillside farms, sometimes with all the buildings standing, sometimes with only one or two, and sometimes with only a lone chimney or fast-filling cellar. Weeds and briars reigned, and furtive wild things rustled in the undergrowth. Upon everything was a haze of restlessness and oppression, a touch of the unreal and the grotesque, as if some vital element of perspective were awry. I did not wonder that the foreigners would not stay, for this was no region to sleep in. It was much like a landscape of Salator Rosa, too much like some forbidden woodcut in a tale of terror. But even all this was not so bad as the blasted heath. I knew at the moment I came upon it at the bottom of the spacious valley, for no other name could fit such a thing, or any other thing for such a name. It was as if the poet had coined the phrase from having seen this one particular region. It must, I thought, as I viewed it, be the outcome of a fire, but why nothing had ever grown new over those five acres of grey desolation that sprawled open to the sky, like a great spot eaten by acid in the woods and fields. It lay largely to the north of the ancient road line, but encroached a little on the other side. I felt an odd reluctance about approaching, and so at last only because my business took me through and past it. There was no vegetation of any kind on that broad expanse, but only a fine gray dust or ash which no wind seemed ever to blow about. The trees near it were sickly and stunted, and many dead trunks stood early rotting at the rim. As I walked hurriedly by, I saw the tumbled bricks and stones of an old chimney and cellar on my right, and the yawning black maw of an abandoned well whose stagnant vapors played strange tricks with the hues of the sunlight. Even the long, dark woodland climb beyond seemed welcome in contrast, and I marveled no more at the frightened whispers of the Arkham people. There had been no house or ruin near, even in the old days the place must have been lonely and remote. And at twilight, dreading to repass the ominous spot, I walked circulously back to the town by the curving road on the south. I vaguely wished some clouds would gather, for an odd timidity about the deep sky voids had crept above and into my soul. Into the evening, I asked old people of Arkham about the blasted heath, 
and what I meant by that phrase, strange days, which so many evasively muttered. I could not, however, get any good answers, except that all the mystery was much more recent than I had dreamed. It was not a matter of old legendary at all, but something with the lifeline of those who spoke. And it happened in the 80s, and a family had been disappeared or was killed. Speakers would not be exact, and because they all told me to pay no attention to old Ami Pierce's crazy tales, I sought him out the next morning, having heard that he lived alone in the ancient tottering co cottage where the trees first began to get very thick. It was a fearsomely anarchic place, and had begun to exude the faint miasmal odor which clings about houses that have stood too long. Only in persistent knocking could I rouse the aged man, and when he shuffled timidly to the door, I could tell he was not glad to see me. He was not so feeble as I had expected, but his eyes dropped in a curious way, and his unkempt clothing and white beard made him seem very worn and dismal. Not knowing just how he could best be launched on his tails, I feigned a matter of business, told him of my surveying, and asked vague questions about the district. He was far brighter and more educated than I had led to think, and before I knew it, had grasped quite as much of the subject as any man I had talked with in Arkham. He was not like other rustics I had known in the sections where reservoirs were to be. From him there were no protests at the miles of old wood and farmland to be blotted out, though perhaps there would have been had not his home lain outside the bounds of the future lake. Relief was all that he shrewd, relief at the doom of the dark ancient valleys through which he had roamed all his life. They were under water now, better under water since the strange days, and with this his husky voice sank low while his body leaned forward and his right finger began to point shakily and impressively. It was then that I heard the story, and the rambling voice scraped and whispered, on I shivered again and again despite the summer day. Often I had to recall the speaker from rambling, piece out scientific points which he knew only by a fading parrot memory of professor's talk, or bridge over gaps where a sense of logic and continuity broke down. When he was done, I did not wonder that his mind had snapped a trifle, or that the folk of Arkham would not speak much of the blasted heath. I hurried back before sunset to my hotel, to have the stars come out above me in the open, and the next day returned to Boston to give up my position. I could not go into that dim chaos of old forest and slope again, or face another time that grey blasted heath, where the black well yawned deep beneath the tumbled bricks and stones. The reservoir will soon be built now, and all those elder secrets will be safe forever under watery fathoms. But even then, I do not believe I would like to visit that country by night, at least when the sinister stars are out, and nothing could bribe me to drink the new city water of Arkham. Okay, so that is part one. Uh, if you guys like this, I will do more reading in the next episode. This is only half the story, but uh, I don't want to go on too long. So uh, if you if you uh, haven't skipped this part, uh, thanks so much for listening. And uh, I'm excited to, uh, until next time, so thank you so much.